Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another weekend update video, the weekly series that comes to you every Sunday while Baby Jay sleeps, where I just talk about whatever is on my mind in my world of gaming. Now, I got a lot of stuff to talk about today. I want to continue to talk about transcendence and reincarnation in War of the Visions. Got a couple things to show off there. I want to talk about covering a new game and what it feels like as a content creator stepping into that it is it's bizarre like it is an experience especially covering one this long pre-launch other games that I've covered I never even stepped into the ring until about like a week before they came out this one stepping into that coverage a month before the game comes out and trying to compete with some of those bigger people out there it's an experience it's not going poorly necessarily but i've got to learn an audience i want to talk about that and i began my persona 5 royale like 100 percent platinum trophy playthrough where i'm literally just skipping all the cutscenes. in fact let's start there so i just finished the second palace in my platinum trophy run of persona 5 royal now look if you've never played that game it is a hundred and probably like 30 hour plus game but so much of that is cutscenes, and a lot of people were like look they know how much time i have in a week and they said there's no way there's no way you can actually plat that before honkai star rail comes out and let me just tell you if you just hit start every time a cutscene comes up and flash through it every text message you get in that game start every time somebody's like morgana pops out of your bag and it's like hey you're like start go away nami 2.0 or wait what was nami no what was link's fairy's name Oh my gosh, Nami's the character from League of Legends. Anyway, you know, hey, listen, that chick. You just hit start, she goes away. I got far. Like, the palaces still take time, and making sure you have every persona still takes a bunch of time, but that's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying that. Now, let's move to War of the Visions, because I got a couple things I want to talk about with Transcendence and Reincarnation, which continues to be probably, like, the hottest topic, in my opinion. I'll also talk about 100 cost units. I have a little bit to say there as well, but first, I want to show you, not equipment, I don't know why I went to equipment, I want to show you my MR Mont. So just today, before I recorded this, I finished reincarnating him. He is done, he is max stars on every single one of these, and I could still re-roll this, I think, to try to get better yellow bar rolls, but this is what my guy looks like. It took me 82 reincarnations to get to this point. You can see my last two stars I got were TP and AP, which which I probably could have just skipped, honestly. It wasn't the biggest deal in the world. And had this been a UR unit, I probably wouldn't have gone this far because there were a couple roles. Like with Mott, I cared mostly about HP, attack, and crit evade. And I had a roll, like notice my crit evade is max and my attack is almost max, but I had a roll earlier where my HP was a little higher than this and I probably would have just stopped and just been like, I can deal without a TP and an AP star. Big deal, right? But this is still, I'm still very happy with this. As my first character that I've reincarnated at all, it wasn't that bad bad um i think it really helped that i split it up between about four or five sessions and having those scrolls added to the mog shop was the the final shove over the reincarnation ledge that i needed to finish him off so that's my mod here's what his stats look like just without any gear on 9500 hp he's just chilling at 9500 hp that's phenomenal. He's still definitely an MR unit, right? 510 attack is nice, but he's got 52 agility. I mean, Eileen is literally faster than him. His decks in luck are still nothing special. He's a great MR unit, but he's still just an MR even after all the reincarnations. However, he is a top tier MR unit now. He hits hard. He's hard to kill. I've I'm still a fan of this system. It's annoying, and I hope at some point relatively soon, we just get an easier way to go about doing this. So that's my mod. Now, I also wanted to show you guys um, how many UR scrolls I have, because I've still spent zero. I've been collecting them, and I've still spent zero. So let's go to this deluxe shop. I have... Let's see, let's count them. 1,300. So I am 300 away, give or take, of being able to fully reincarnate a UR unit. Now, I am a whale in War of the Visions, right? I spend 
um, two to four hundred dollars a month. That's Amazon coin, so it's a little bit less than that. Let's just say I'll give you a nice round number. I'm in that two fifty to three hundred dollars a month playing War of the Visions. During the anniversary, I ramped that up a little bit. Before the anniversary, there were a couple months where I spent nothing. So that's just kind of a feel for where I am in spending in this game. Now, if I was a brand new player, I might be spending a little bit more, but I'm trying to put some of my budget now over towards Honkai Star Rail, right? And yo, know, everybody's finances are different, but my I bring that up because my main source for getting scrolls has been these UR Transcendence Packs. You can buy these three times, it's 1K paid and you get 80. So that's 240 a week I've been able to get. That will put me significantly ahead of other people. Note, I have not been purchasing these packs where you get 20 for 500. Like, could I get, I could get enough to like go finish a unit right now if I wanted to, but then I'd be out, my viz would be really drained. I just don't like these packs at all. So that's been my main way of getting it and I'm sticking with my plan of King Bradley being the first UR unit that I'm going to fully reincarnate so super looking forward to him we're looking at maybe three to four weeks until he's out plenty of time for me to get those scrolls and then start building up scrolls for Eileen my next unit now obviously as a spender as somebody who spends money in the game I'm going to be able to do that faster than free to play players I do like I'm clicking on all these random buttons today but this is a Sunday video, so who cares? Um, I do like that they went ahead and added the scrolls to the shops. So if you go down to the Mog Metal shop right here, you can buy antlers and scrolls for uh, soul medals. Now, these are what you get for pulling like dupes in of UR units in poles. I have a lot of them, but again, like I have all the units in the game. These are something that are not a bottleneck for me. Like I only really use these to do these mind spheres. So I have a lot of these to spare. I really like that system, but for players that aren't veteran players who are not cashing in a whole bunch of Mog Medals, I do still want to see more free ways of getting scrolls in this game. They need to come relatively soon. Uh, I'm happy we got this. Like this is a step in the right direction. It's the first of many steps that need to happen in that direction for this system to become more palatable for light spenders and free to play players. Now, if you go down a level in the in the coins, like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna snag all this because these coins I use for literally nothing. So that's an easy pickup. And then these coins right here, also, again, I use these for literally nothing in the game. Watch, I'll buy these tickets too, because why not? Uh, yep, I'll throw 11,000 of those at something. No big deal, I still have 89,000 left. Uh, there's no, they don't go lower than that. But if you haven't picked those up yet, especially these right here, um, I would suggest it because transcending and reincarnating MR and SR units gives them a big power spike. You just saw my Mont. I know a lot of people have already done Leela. I'm going to be just holding on to my, uh, my, my SR scrolls for a little bit longer until a unit that I really like. Did I crash the game? I think I crashed it. Or it's like DC'd me. That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to hold on to my MR or SR scrolls for a little bit longer until a unit I really like comes out. Now, here we go. We got it to load. So, how many of these do I have? I have 2,700. Like, I could definitely go start max reincarnating SR units right now. I just don't have a need to. Okay. Well, which one do I actually like? Naya is a favorite of mine. Maybe the next time I use Naya, I max reincarnator for fun. Okay. Let's talk. I want to talk about spending money in games right now and like people ask me all the time how much money should spend like like the word should and spend is thrown around a lot and that's a category that's a territory where i don't particularly like to venture because like okay for me my financial situation is such that my wife and i both have full-time jobs my wife is doing a surrogacy pregnancy that's money i run this youtube channel which is basically another full-time job that's money so we have four sources of income four right that gives me the ability and the need honestly to speed up my progress through spending i am busy and i when i have a little bit of free time i do like to veg out on a little persona for 30 to 45 minutes a day not grind something out so for me how much money 
Um, should I spend on games? Well, it's very different. I get content out of spending money. People gift me subs or send me super chats. So they're like, hey, this is for your Yuffie polls. And then, okay, I'm going to put that money back into the game. For most people, I think Dolphin level is just fine. Like, I do... Look, I understand free-to-play players, and I understand that games need them, and I love free-to-play players. Like, I hope you all are having a great time playing the game, and I know that games need you, but I don't know that that's where I would say most players should be. I think a lot of people should start out free-to-play, and if they are enjoying that experience, should stay there as long as they want, but at some point... If you've been playing a game that people work on for years, throw them a couple bucks, right? Like, it's a service. Online mobile games are services. I know at least here, like, when someone is providing a service for me, I provide a tip for them. And it's a really awkward American thing. If you're not from the States, you probably don't understand our, like, weird culture where you go to a restaurant and you like pay full price for your food but the person bringing you that food is literally not paid any money they're paid enough wages to like cover the taxes in their paycheck but they're not paid an actual wage and they rely on your um, your tips essentially your generosity to even make money and so like i i think with uh with mobile gaming if i had to answer somebody pinned me down and made me make a comment that will make people mad what i would say is i don't know that it is perfectly ethical to be a free-to-play player forever now put a pin in that because i don't think there's any ethic like i think when you're talking capitalism and when you're talking like you know running a business when you bring ethics in the waters get really really muddy i just know personally if I play a game for any amount of time, I'm going to spend a few bucks. Like, I'm going to throw the people who are making that game some monetary support. Not nearly as much as War of the Visions. I've spent more on this game than any game in the history of gaming, and I don't think most people should spend what I do. I'm not saying hundreds of dollars a month, but I am saying, like, 20 Something like that. Somewhere in that realm of like, hey, I enjoy this game most every day. Here's some money. And then by spending that money, you will get the reward of speeding up your progress a little bit. That's my answer to that. And I don't know, like, I can't even remember what all I've just said. I'm trying to just speak from speak from what I feel on that one. This is not a scripted video. Sunday videos, none of my videos are actually scripted. But my Sunday videos are super not scripted. So there's that. Now next... I want to show you guys something kind of interesting here. I'm going to show you a little bit of the background of my YouTube channel. Um, here is my released content. Now, you can see this weekend, I went fairly heavy. Like, my last three videos, this isn't the best scene. Let me put it to the bottom. Let me put my can. Well, anyway. Well, it is what it is. Okay, so these top three videos right here, the last three videos I released were Honkai Star Rail videos. Um, I was doing character previews, I did Branya and Belu, and you can see the views right here just aren't a ton, right? Like 1,500 for the Branya video that came out yesterday, uh, 863 for the Belu video. Do you know how long it's been since I put out a video that didn't get 1,000 views in two days? And I get that like that's a healer unit, and people just don't care at this point to be looking deep into these kits, and there's not a whole lot of deepness in a lot of these kits. So it's been tough for me to figure out how to pivot like what kind of content do people want for honkai star rail is what i'm trying to figure out right now now if i scroll down a little bit you can see down here i did this re-roll guide it has 7800 views that's pretty good in fact on the screen right now that is the most views of any video i've made i did a free to play roster video that has 6300 views that's pretty good and then my just hey i'm gonna play this game video you should go click on this pre-release rewards is it like what like 5900 almost 6k and one thing that's different for me than a lot of my other videos like check this little graph out i'm going to show you man i need to like okay here's a little bit better view but one thing that's been interesting about these videos is like most of the time my war of the visions videos are very like specific to that day like very relevant to players on the day they come out and so i get this big initial spike in viewership right 
Um, my Honkai Star Rail videos do get an initial bit of interest. You can see that right there. But then they continue to grow and eventually, like this video eventually outpaced my War of the Visions videos. Um, and I hope it just continues to do that. So like that's an adjustment for me as a content creator is not getting that huge initial surge of views. Huge initial surge of views is a really tough thing to say. Um, but instead, more people are finding my videos through like searching on YouTube instead of just recommendations and stuff like that. So I need to continue to try to teach YouTube that I am a Honkai Star Rail creator now as well as War of the Visions while also trying to learn what Honkai Star Rail viewers want to see. Now, I thought my Who Should You Poll video would be pretty good for that. And you can see it has about a thousand views. I put that out late last night. But if we look at those stats, like it really just has been steadily average, right? Steadily below average for my channel. So I probably just need to do a tier list. Like, I think that's how most new viewers get that initial um exposure into your channel is you do a tier list and if that's a video i did not want to do for a while because i just didn't know like are they gonna nerf stuff are they gonna change stuff i feel like we're still pretty far away from launch but i need to just set that feeling that i have to the side and embrace the fact that people want to see a tier list before a game comes out and I need to just I need to just go ahead and do one. So I'm probably going to work on that this upcoming week as I continue to try to learn as I continue to try to learn what Star Rail viewers want and I continue to try to learn what YouTube wants me to make and like teaching the YouTube algorithm that I make videos about this stuff. That's a tough thing to do. In the past I succeeded with like Echo Zamana, Near Reincarnation and uh um uh, Nino Kuni, but I, I'm thinking back, I was like, one of the first videos I did for those games was a tier list video, and they blew up. Like, it, here, I'll show you something cool. Um, my most viewed video of all time, if we want to sort by that, is free to play Nino Kuni tier list and reroll guide for Nino Kuni. Then we go down a little bit. Like, remember the game Near Reincarnation? Yeah, bo barely anybody does. But my re-rolling guide is one of my, is still one of my like top 10 most viewed videos ever. And then like War of the Visions new player stuff and tier lists also do pretty well. So there's a lot of tier lists in this game. Sure, some of these Nino Kuni videos from like the first week or so the game came out were really popular. But I gotta just, I gotta figure out like how to do Honkai Star Rail content. That's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, guys, that is going to be my little uh, Sunday thoughts video. That's what's going through my head. I'm enjoying life as much as ever. I am super, super ready for school to be out for the summer. These last few weeks at an elementary school, yo, these kids have lost their minds. They, they have they have officially gone off the deep end. And so I'm just fishing them back every day, and that's a thing. Okay, anyway, thank you all for watching. Have a great week this week, and I'll see you next time. Peace.